This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host, Kami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello, everybody. And this week's After Hours guest is Gary Walter. Hello, glad to be here. Yay! It's been so long since we've been with you. Oh no, what's going on? It sounds like there's an emergency. (laughs) Oh yeah, babies. G. Walter in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Squad 51. Squad 51. I'm afraid, G. Walter I'm afraid in we the have house. a little problem, though. There's some, <clears throat> there's some bacon product on the table that's going to get cold before your sound clips run out. Oh, the sound clips are done. Okay. Bummer. So, again, G. Walter in the house. Woohoo! Um, and, and emergency fan. Yeah. Changed you, my life. You loved Emergency so much, you didn't even you didn't just watch it. You became it. Yeah. 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 I don't know how that happened. All right, we have to do this before we do that though. Okay. Because this is not the Scott Kavitan hour. The soy bacon is already. Oh, now it's, it's already really not cold. the Scott Kavitan hour. <laughs> <laughs> do you see this? You can't see it if you're listening to the MB3. It smells so good. Here, Gary, take one. It smells so good. Pass okay, that on over to Dr. Normal. Tofu bacon? Soy. Soy bacon. We're, mm-hmm. we're, <laughs> I'm going to eat this. I think Kavitan doesn't watch the show anymore. So The original brand name of this was called Stripples. Oh, my God. And a friend of mine. It's the, like a sausage. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine, she named her cat Stripples. Stripples. Mm-hmm. But now it's made by the people that make my favorite sausage. We actually sausage. have real meat products over there. So Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm going to have another bite in the nom. It's like a chip. Okay, yeah. if this goes on for much longer, you know, we're just, uh, we'll just be back. But we have uh, really, really, really good food on the table. Cam G365. So we have. That's we for have, the kids in the chat room. We They're have, freaking out we, right now. Before we go any further, we have. We have beautiful Greek desserts from. Um, from Z B and I can't say it. It's just from Ed. Ed. Thank Ed. you, Ed. I can't Thanks. remember your Twitter. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Ed. Ed. Yeah, I hope it's, I'm saying that right. It's amazing that all of those made it here. Yeah, were, I'm dying to get in there. Well, I, the I, first I, thing you said when you handed it to me was, did you know this was coming? And right. I could tell he wanted to eat them all and not share with us. I, th- I had them for three hours, and I never <laughs> opened the box. That was very, very big of you. Yes. Yeah, um, it's a good point in the chat room that if you keep eating that tofu bacon, we're going to need medical care soon. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm not No, this I'm not was into invented it. so you will live longer. <laughs> It's high in sodium, low in fiber. Mm, except for I have high blood pressure. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I have to so, put the bacon down. This stuff was invented for people who want to be vegetarian but are too lazy to actually eat health- exactly. healthfully. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the point. It's like, I'm a vegetarian, but I want to eat tofu, tofu, furky. <laughs> yeah. To, to, what, what am I trying to say? Tofurky. Tofurky. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Turkey tofu? We tried that what, this last Thanksgiving. It was horrible. Hello. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. I, I, how about tofu spam? Tofu spam? Never yeah. heard of it. Spam, spam tofu. Spam, that would be interesting. Spam, yeah. spam. Tofu based spam. I went to the spam factory in Minnesota or wherever it was. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't think you want to see that. I didn't go in. I just drove by it. Yeah. 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 Speaking yeah. of seeing things, so mm. so you're out there. <laughs> nice eat segue. Off camera. <laughs> eat <it>. Nice segue. <laughs> um, so you're out there, paramedic, you're out there on the life flight. So, um, now I remember when I was a kid, I'd watch Emergency. Mm -hmm. Now, did you ever walk in on a naked woman in the bathtub (laughs) with her toe stuck in the, um, in the, in the, in the spout? Because that happened like on every Adam 12 and Emergency. Dick Van Dyke. And Dick Van Dyke. Yes, remember? Yeah. (laughs) Mary Tyler Moore naked in the bathtub with her toe stuck. Oh, come on. Mary Tyler Moore back in the day, Mm -hmm. naked in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Sleeping in their twin beds. I'm taking, I'm taking that call. (laughs) Wait, 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 wait. So that's what I don't get. She can be naked in the bathtub with her toes stuck in the spout. Right. But they have to sleep in twin beds. Right. Come yeah. on, people. Right. That's because right. uh, uh, her husband, comedy writer, was 
never mind. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> no, I never. You know went, what I'm saying. I never went on a call like that. But can I tell you a funny story? Yes. Some, Wait. some friends of mine, Thanksgiving. Hang Day. on, hang on. It's the. It's the G. Walter in the house. Funny story. <laughs> This is time for the funny story. story. This is time for the funny story. Okay. Okay. So, Thanksgiving Day. Yes. In Aloha, Oregon. Okay. Um, This is like a a paramedic emergency story. Paramedic emergency story. They get a call and they have to break in the door to get into the house. And they find a naked man and a naked woman handcuffed to the bed. Nice. Smeared with turkey and dressing and cranberry sauce. Where was this? In Aloha. Well, of course. (laughs) Jeez Louise. And of course, they couldn't. I can't believe I said that. (laughs) They didn't put the key where they could get to it after they locked themselves into this predicament. Now, those were turkey enthusiasts. Yes. (laughs) Thanksgiving enthusiasts. Oh, I mean, the best thing, were they willing to? Wearing pilgrim hats? They were wearing nothing. And Nicky's he, um, he apparently was trying to cover himself uh, profusely, and she was unashamed. Wait so. a minute. Who made this call? <laughs> Not my shift. But, I mean, who who, who, who actually Did phoned it Did one of them in? call? They could reach the phone, but they couldn't <laughs> reach the key. <laughs> they could reach the phone, couldn't reach the key. They wouldn't just call one of their friends? I'm sorry. Hey, I'd just rot buddy. and die there. Well, I'm, I'm so, not having people. I know. You know Obviously, I, she's the one that made the phone call, because I wouldn't rot and die there, but... I also wouldn't smear turkey yeah. all over myself. So. Men who will not stop and ask for directions are not going to call for help when they're handcuffed to the bed. They will <laughs> they will chew through the bedpost. Or exactly. Yeah. It's a, it's like a guy trying to drive and getting the directions. <laughs> it's like, no, I know what to do here. I saw this, read this in a book about Houdini. MacGyver. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if they had gravy, right? Just smear some gravy they on They had, I, I guess it was just a total, oh. total mess. They were just having a good time for a while. Mm. Okay, but but what's the funniest call you've ever been on? The funniest call I mean, that just, I've ever been on? Because, I mean, an emergency. It's a okay. laugh riot, right? Yes, all There's the always, time. You know. All the time. <laughs> do you... Uh, do you remember Rick Moranis and Ghostbusters? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Oh, we love the Ghostbusters. We got a call. Are you the gatekeeper? I'm the key master. Yeah. Yeah. This guy was, he was a spitting image of Rick Moranis in nice. that movie. Drunk. Yeah. And this kitty was meowing outside his window, so he opened the door, and the kitty came in and attacked him. <laughs> and oh, you're he had, kidding. He had claw marks. Not deep, not serious, yeah. but claw. And, and the guy... Freaked out and called the paramedics. Mm-hmm. No wow. kidding. It, it, spit an image of Rick Moranis. It might have been Rick Moranis. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. My... Oh, no. Your bacon is dead. <laughs> it is. There's more. Bacon down. Bacon down. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, you know, it, people always want to hear funny stories, and then the kids get around, and they want to hear gory stories. You, and... know, you know what you can do? You just just tell plots from yeah. emergency, Emergency, right? that's <laughs> right. It's just like... Well, this car went over the bank. And we had to rappel down. And, and I remember we got on the got on the uh, um, uh, radio with uh, talk Nurse to Dixie, Dixie. Dixie. Call. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> that's right. So, does, are you like then suggesting our and then she sang uh, us our a cop jazz friends? Tune. I don't know why. Tell she stories just from did. Dragnet. What's that? Should our cop friends tell stories from Dragnet? Absolutely. Yeah. Just the facts, though. Well, I mean, the way this came up <laughs> is that that we had this emergency Twitter. Theme and yeah. then this is how it turned out. You know, I, I was well. A that's how we paramedic. That's and, how we connected. Yeah, you know, I, I'm like, cool. I watched Emergency and played in a rock and roll band. You actually <laughs> got on Life Flight. Wonderful. You yeah, know? I <laughs> wanted to be in a rock and roll band. I yeah. I used to when I was eight years old. I used to hang out in Which a basement one like this. Is the slacker. Yeah, <clears throat> practice my wipeout on the drums. I, I still, Ooh, I still have, out. I still have those drumsticks from when I was eight years old. My, there we go. My friend gave them Very to me. Very nice. Yeah. At least, I think I have them. So you're flying Mm -hmm. around all over Oregon in that helicopter? Life flight was cool. Saving people's lives? Life flight was cool. Well, first you started out on on an ambulance, a paramedic, right? Yeah, well, I started out as an explorer scout in the fire department. Um, I I wasn't an explorer, but I was a scout. Yeah. I I just got burned out and wanted to drop out. I I only made it as far as Weeblos and the whole Cub Scout thing. And um, I got you there. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. Normal is a certified Eagle Scout. Ah, that He's does not always does prepared. not surprise me. That does not surprise <laughs> me. Always prepared for what? I, we don't need to know. Uh, <laughs> Everything. Bad audio. <laughs> right? <laughs> Peaks and valleys on the board. Okay. No, and and a friend of mine, you know, remember those um uh career tests you used to take and they'd oh, come yes. back and they'd tell you what you were good at? 
I remember my, when the army came into my high school and we did one of those. <laughs> wow, you scored high. It's like, yeah, this isn't a public school. <laughs> it's a private school. But you know, mine came back. Well, you could be an airline pilot. You could be a mechanic. You could be a foot soldier. You know, I mean, I. Mm-hmm. It, 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 <laughs> <What's>, <laughs> there's, I'll take that one. There's so much. But a friend of mine, about the only thing that came back for him was fire department. Mm-hmm. And so the Explorer Scout program contacted him and asked sure. him if he wanted to join. And he asked me if I wanted to go with him. And I go, well, what's that about? He goes, well, you ever seen Emergency? And I said, yeah. And he said, what's that? And I said, okay. <laughs> cool, dude. Let's go be on Emergency. <laughs> so so I can have big, bushy hair, yeah. save people, and, and, and you know, kind of kind of uh, do, do that, like, um, what, what do they call it when guys, like, go after chase do the skirt chasing right but yeah skirt chasing. Rouse, kind of yeah but it's worse than that yeah it was like that 70s sensibility right yeah and and i actually worked with some guys who i don't know about sure. who had a scorecard uh, they had a running bet oh. see if they could go see if they could bed a thousand women a, were the uh, nurses as hot as nurse dixie mccall oh the the flight nurses were oh whoa <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, See, I want to ask a Mile High Club question here. Go <laughs> no, ahead. It's not no. anything I've never heard before. No. Uh, have I mentioned G. Walter in the house, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> no. The, uh, um, Next thing you're going to give me a shout out to somebody who wants to smack you. I got to get that thing. <laughs> that's going to be the new... Uh, that's going to be the new... Uh, uh, I got I got one that, sensor beep or something. I got one that sounds like when you call a telephone and you get the wrong number and it goes doo doo doo. Yeah. The doo-doo-doo. number you have called, nine one one, has been changed. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a non published number. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, um do you guys follow the the nine one one dispatcher in Clackamas County? Uh you mean as far as listening to it on, on the radio? Twitter? Uh, no, on Twitter. On Twitter. No. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, Who? Um, but then is, again, you can have a Bearcat. Who's the nine one one? Multi channel radio. I can't remember what his name is right now. But he's always he's hey, there's a fire in Clackamas. Oh wait a minute! This guy is sending out tweets while he's doing his job mm-hmm. trying to save people. Yeah, I'm not so sure I'm Danger, okay with that. Though. I don't live in Clackamas County. I mean, this is like the train engineer down in California, yeah. right? It's yeah. like mm, get yeah. the hell off Twitter and do your job, maybe. Yeah, uh, he's. He, what he, he, Twitter? What's his name? Paul. It, why would you get off of Twitter? Is it, is it Paul Campbell? Well, huh. I'm gonna. It was, just ra- send me that when you. Ra- Raven Zachary is the one that turned me on to that. Huh. So um, anyway, he's pretty funny. He posts stuff about drunk people and weird calls and stuff like that. Hopefully, he's doing that on his break time. Yeah, probably. Um, I mean, I could just see it. I, I, I'm bleeding my arms off, and oh, hang on, I'm sending a tweet. Just yeah, say, that's I'm, really I'm just, cool. Oh, Which crap. arm is it? Because the Twitter version. Oh wants crap! To know. Twitterific just uh, crashed on my iPhone. I'm that's gonna have to <laughs> fire up uh, Twitter later. Hang on. I think oh, wait, I think I he does put death. a priority on his job because when that big fire in Clackamas last week, yeah, or, yep. he broadcast it. I said, "Where is it?" Never heard from him for like a day and a half. Okay. And today mm-hmm. I got the backstory. I visited my fire marshal friend in Beaverton, and. Uh, he gave me the backstory on that, but the interesting backstory. Did you hear about that big house in West Wind that burned? That I, I did hear about fourteen million dollar house or something like that. Yeah, the guy is a Pakistani arms dealer. Oh my goodness! Yeah, is that common knowledge or are we breaking news here? I think we're life? breaking news. I think oh, you got okay. the scoop. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll be like. Uh, <laughs> Where, where, where are we he at? Was uh, always, 13 a, minutes, 53. I don't need to mark that bleep, bleep that out. No, he, he's a That's legal, a he's a legal arms dealer. And, uh, oh, a legal arms a dealer. A legal arms dealer. And, and they got <laughs> video surveillance. They watched the fire develop on, on camera uh, and all this stuff. And uh, Pretty interesting. Uh, but the funny part was... Doo, 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 the I, podcast you were listening to <laughs> has been disconnected. Exactly. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who are those? Exactly. Who are those Homeland Security guys at your door? Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and here we could have just been talking about paramedic sex. That's right. No, that's I, safe. I, I'm, I'm not. That's not safe. Um, no, I was just going to say, who said it was safe no, sex? I don't... No, that's not safe. Um, See, not safe. <laughs> but this house burns to the ground. Here's here's the here's okay. the real scoop. House burns to the down to the ground. It's got mm-hmm. all this surveillance. They have dogs in cages that can be released remotely. Oh, all, Lord. all this kind of stuff. Oh, I hope Lord. they released the poor pup. I think they did, okay. but but only in when the firefighters were like on top of the engines or something. But oh, um word. Th- the fire's out, sun's coming up, sprinkler comes on. <laughs> <laughs> 
And this this was your friend that it was just like nice. yeah. Yeah. lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. So no, I went on my first emergency call. I was 15 years old. It was over in Cedar Mill. Wow. And you, and you were, um, this is uh, when you were the Explorer Scout. I was an Explorer Scout. I'm right. just standing there with my finger in my ear, wet behind the ears, 15-year-old. And and the tones go off, and they go, you want to go? And I'm like, sure. And so I climb in the back of this rescue, and they're going up Germantown Road or something. And I'm rolling around in the back. I've never been in, the, in an emergency vehicle. I've only been doing this for a week. Mm-hmm. We get out on this, some lonely dark road. There's a car upside down in the ditch. And they hand me the stack of flares and say, run down the road and light these. I'm down there in the dark. Uh-huh. No flashlight, no vest. I, I've never seen a flare. I've never held a flare. I'm striking it on the ground. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking for a match. I, I'm just, but I'm one of those kind of guys, I'm not going to ask for help. And I'm going to figure this out. And so after about five or 10 minutes, I figured out how to light that flare. And, wow. Um, so how'd you do it? I don't know. On your zipper? Yeah. <laughs> so what he's saying is if he had been the guy handcuffed with the turkey, yeah. he would not have I called 911. I think he did it on his zipper, and I think there's stories that we can't no, talk about no. there. Turns out your own a, paramedic ride. Turns today. out there's a little cap, and it has a little striker. Yeah. and, and uh, But that was my first call, and, um, you know, it was they just... It, it was, was all joy after that? Yeah, it was. Really, it it was a good job. It was very rewarding. It was uh, very exciting. My sleep patterns have been disrupted for the rest of my life. My I I have no circadian rhythm. Um, huh. It's I'm up at two. I've got, noticed that about yes. you, by the way. <laughs> I, I go to bed at ten. I sleep till two. I go to bed at two. I sleep till yeah. You're 11, tweeting at yeah. one in the morning. I'm yeah. Like, oh, God. It, it's just you know. It's just bizarre. So. Uh, it's unusual for me. I feel like I am now the person in the room with the most normal sleep habit. Yeah. And I, I, I don't have normal sleep habits, really. I'm amazed. That, well, you seem to, because, and and I think we had a conversation on Twitter once yeah. about how you have to because of your child care responsibilities. I, I go Twitter dark at a certain time every night because mm. if yep. I know if I'm looking at the Twitter, because once I say good night, I try not to look at Twitter because I know if I do, I'm going to be like, ooh, ooh, I have something to say. Yeah. So I just shut it down. And even if I'm not asleep, I try to be quiet right. with my eyes closed because then I'm a, a wreck the next day. I usually wind up taking an hour nap every day anyway because I'm so exhausted. I had planned on doing that today and it never happened. Yeah. But uh, Is yeah. this where we're supposed to drunk dial Steve's wrong? <laughs> I don't think anyone's drunk. We, we haven't we haven't done that. Uh, we do need to time. drunk dial Steve's wrong at some we point. We never but I drunk think dialed in him, order, by the way. Dr. Normal drunk dialed Steve's wrong. I did wrong. not. Yes, it was did. an accident on Skype. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> it was a Skype accident. It was a booty call. <laughs> it was a Steve's wrong okay. booty call. He's um, been pretty busy lately. Have, you, have you guys actually met Steve's? No. Role? No. no. Well, We're like yes. the only He's Portland the people. That... Do you know how close I was to meeting him? I was a block away. Oh. I'm, I'm at uh, Anna Bananas or something in St. Mm-hmm. John's, and we're there with some friends. We're having lunch, and I tweet that we're there, and he tweets back. He goes, I'm down at McMinimums, and uh, he was there with Media Chick, and uh, I so much wanted to walk down and see him. I but... would have been like, excuse me. I don't love any of you. I have to go meet Steve now. I know, but the problem was <laughs> our friends had just had a stillbirth oh, God, baby. Yeah, and it was absolutely, can't. it was the most horrible thing that you've ever heard. You can't walk out on that. No, yeah. no. Um, I was actually embarrassed that I tweeted after that all. But Steve and I continue to have these conversations about, you know. We're He's the only one up on Twitter. <laughs> right, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is he on Twitter right Maybe now? Maybe Brom, but you know, yeah, even yeah. Brom has to go to sleep at some point. Yeah, well, one would think. And he's, and Steve's wrong is in Europe, so he's all like, you know, yeah. by 3 a.m. He's like, oh, all right, you know. Yeah. Fantastic. There are people to talk to. That's right. Oh, Twitter. I love you. So, so wait, I haven't. Oh. Earlier, you said you were still on Plurk. I only, I only multicast from Ping on Plurk. Okay, it, so you don't actually. No. Oh, okay, good, because. No. The time and it moves to the load. Yeah, I, no, I only I only multicast from Ping, and I generally only multicast when I'm mobile. Careful, um, Holoto is in the chat room tonight. Is he? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hi, Dante. So, so he, he will. Dante doesn't like Plurk either. Really? I don't know. That shocks me. Dante Actually, likes he's their everything. spokesman. Yeah. Dante's a Hello, internet I'm technology Hello, whore. 
You know, he's actually a pretty funny guy. We were sitting at the table. No, um, talking, surely not. Talking we don't tonight. like. Uh, we don't like him. <laughs> he is sarcastic. He's cynical. He's funny. Um, the hell are you doing with your hands over there? My my the headphones are making my ear okay. itchy. Yeah. Right. yeah. Anyway, I was. Hoping. I thought you were mad at me for saying I don't like Nate. He was making me laugh. No, no, I was just. <laughs> you make weird. You're on camera. Yeah, it's a byproduct. You don't, you don't give a crap. <laughs> My ear so, was itchy. I couldn't control myself. So no women in bathtubs with the toes stuck in the... I mean, did you ever... You must have gotten... No, really has... The whole... No, wait a minute. The I, whole I just, time, there must have been question. a booty call. There must have been a 911 to get a bunch of firefighters in the room. No. Um, what they would do uh, on like summer days, they, they do... Uh, they go check the fire lanes at apartment complexes. Ah, so they could cruise by the swimming pools. Oh, um, there you go. And it, you know the really scary thing is, most of the guys I worked with were about fifteen years older than me, and their daughters were about the same age as yeah. these girls at the swimming <laughs> pools, and so it was kind of creepy. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so, so you just go ask your daughters for an invite. You know, yeah. just have to, they're friends. Yeah, right? That's right. Uh, um, no. The closest I ever came to to really being out of my element was when I was no, working. But like emergency, you know. Hi, Mister Firefighter. I'm something's going on here. Quick, come. Is, is that why all little boys want to be firefighters? I think I asked the wrong question. No. Because <laughs> um, well, this happened on emergency all the time. That's I know. why I asked. Okay. Okay. Gage and DeSoto were very. Okay, here, here's my here's my life story in, in, in transparency. In 140 characters. In 140 characters. I'm driving, we're going on a call, and I come around this corner, and I see this really attractive woman sitting in a 280ZX. Oh, at, yeah. At 209th and, and TV Highway. And it, it was just one of those things that catches your eye. And mm-hmm. uh, you move on, and, you know, well, about a week later, <laughs> about a week oh, later, yeah. I get this, we get this call to a cardiac arrest. Mm-hmm. And um, long story short, it turned out it was the same woman that I'd seen mm-hmm. in the 280ZX doing CPR on this guy. Oh, um, wow. And we walk into the room, and apparently I said, take over for her. She doesn't know what the hell she's doing. Uh-oh. Oh. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I didn't say that. <sighs> That's I, not a good opening line. No, no, no not a good way to <laughs> no, go, gee, girl. Not a good opening line. I, I'm More pr- like, wow, you look hot doing CPR on that guy. Can I take over? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I didn't say that. Um, but I was told for months later that that's what i did say um <laughs> months later yes yeah. um because here's what happened we're we're doing cpr on this guy and we're pushing drugs and we're shocking him and we're doing all the all the paramedic stuff mm-hmm. and and every time i looked over at this girl in the purple jumpsuit she's beaming purple jumpsuit she's beaming at me yeah you know and and i'm running the call so i'm like you know mr in charge and that oh yeah to attract mm-hmm. women and and she's holding the so IV bag say. for us, and and uh, oh yeah, get her to hold the IV bag. Yeah. That's a good one, man, dude. You're in, you're in, baby. So we go to the right, ho- doctor. No, too excited. Back it off a bit. Let him I want to be a story. firefighter. Is it too late for me to be a firefighter? Yes, yes, yes it is. Okay. It's too late for you. I would have um, this down. Could you hold this IV bag, darling? <laughs> Thank you. So we go to St. Vincent Hospital. <laughs> we take this guy to St. Vincent Hospital. I don't know if they're related. I don't know if this is his daughter. I don't know who mm-hmm. it is. And we're at St. Vincent. The old man. And, and, and she's putting him away. He doesn't make it. Um, which, oh, of course not. Which is not too unusual. She poisoned him. She poisoned him. And so Dr. Norman, be I, go, I go out in the waiting room, or back into the lobby of the of St. Vincent ER, and she's standing there. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I'm supposed to say I'm sorry or, you know, what I'm Difficult supposed to do. And, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And she still just beaming at me. You know, just, <laughs> and, uh, so you hope that she's not so emotionally stunted that that was like her dad. And so <laughs> my old man I'm died, trying, but I'm trying to I'm figure hooking out. up here, baby. I'm trying to I figure out it. how can I get her number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's the old, man, we're going to need your name and number for our records, which oh. is a total lie. <laughs> and so, an emergency yeah, all the time. But, but I'm but I'm like, I'm not Johnny Gage. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I, I'm just not going to do that. I have a certain level. But all the way back to the station, from St. Vincent Hospital to Aloha, I'm pounding on the dash. I'm pounding on my knee. And I said, ah! Oh! You know, because there was this connection, yeah. you know. Yeah. But it'd just be so totally 
inappropriate to do this over a dead body. And, uh, <laughs> so hey, or not. So How we, you doing? We stop at, uh, what's that pizza place on um, um, 179th and TV Highway? Um, Gina, uh, oh, Delamico's? De, de, de uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Italian place. Yeah. yeah. Um, gosh, so, it's been there forever. Yeah, so we yeah. stopped there and got a pizza, and we took yeah. it back to the station, and, and we're sitting there, jeez, you know, and, and my partner, who is married and not so stable but he's like call her DeSoto. yeah call her call her and i'm like no you know what am i gonna do so finally i i just can't take it anymore and i get up and i call the emergency room and i said i need to talk and i get transferred i think to every nurse in the er oh my word who is this this is gary I, i'm looking for the girl in the purple jumpsuit hot chick purple yeah. jumpsuit and, and they just keep so everybody and and it, no wait, 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 wait. what did you say to the nurses who you knew each time you got transferred. I just said I need to talk to the girl in the purple jumpsuit. And that's all you said? But did oh. they know? Were I, they don't like, know. Mm. I don't know. Um, I'm yeah, ask, right. The, the, like, we're going to have to have my cousin on the show who's a nurse. I'm going to ask what, her what if this kind of thing happens this? often. The, the nurses at St. Vincent Saint looked Vincent. at paramedics with they're, disdain. Um, mm. Yeah, and they're like they're like yelling down the hall. It's booty call for G. <laughs> no, booty call. I hope it wasn't your daddy that died because exactly. there's a paramedic on the phone. Okay, so, go ahead. Anyway, yeah. so um, I finally get her on the phone, mm -hmm. and she goes, "Who is this?" And I said, oh, "I'm one of the paramedics that was on the call." <laughs> Who the hell is this? And, Hi, baby. And, and she's How like, you doing? "Are you the one with the, uh, with the with a mustache or without?" And I go, "With the you're mustache." You're a firefighter. She's like, she's like, "Oh," she goes. I was going to ask you out for coffee. And she was so Aww. thrilled that I called and we ended up living together for six months. So, And it wasn't her dad right. that died? No. Good, good, good. She was just an innocent bystander. And oh, really? That, uh, That's what she told you. The problem <laughs> is that she I was turned, gold digging and yeah. then, you know, oh no. Uh, well, the problem is she turned out to be a... Uh, Wonderful uh, woman. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful gal. <laughs> I put her through drug and alcohol treatment. And oh, yeah, 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 we were, yeah, yeah. yeah it was, Didn't work out well in the end. It, it, but he did get to see her outside of the purple jumpsuit. What? <laughs> what Gary oh, oh, learned. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That, what that, Gary learned is Gary is not the smartest guy on the planet. Can, Cammie, what was that line again? Can you say that again? He. But he did get to see her outside of the purple jumpsuit. No, it was purely platonic. Okay. It was purely platonic. She just lived in my house. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's when I lived here in Selwood. Oh. Oh. 11th and... Swinging. 11th and Tacoma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. You got some more stuff. So oh, uh, actually, the place is called Nona Amelia's. Nona Amelia's. Nona Amelia's. Yeah, Terosi. Yeah, yeah, I know. I knew thank both, you, Rick. Thank you, you Rick. <laughs> I know. We all knew what you were talking about. So yeah. I have a question... We don't have our, our chat mistress in house this evening. We Are there not. any questions from the chat room, Doctor Norma? Um, the one I'm looking at right now is, "Can't that bald guy warm you up?" I don't know. That's from Polo. Bald guy. Do I know a bald? I, I guy? think I think they've fixated you know, on the story. Uh, I like of, hair. Just told. I like yeah. I like I like men with so hair on like, their head. Yeah. So so life. So so I'm trying to so. You train as a paramedic. You're on an ambulance. Mm -hmm. Then you're in a. Doctor then you're Newell working for a Tualatin Valley. Mm -hmm. I, fire. I named the fire district, by the way. What's really? the name? Yeah. TVVR? Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue. When mm -hmm. when I started yeah. there, it was Washington County Fire District One. That's mm -hmm. right. And in the late '80s, we merged with Beaverton and Tualatin, and they had yep. a contest. And I came up with a name, and I got a free weekend down in Lincoln City. Sweet. And a date yeah. with a girl in a purple jumpsuit. No, um, no, no, I was just a flight nurse. <laughs> so then, so then uh, um, and then, w w w then you were on life flight, or you did the battalion. I, GP I, um, I uh, just step us through. I, yeah, I worked on. Um, I worked a voluntary ambulance when I was in, in a college in Walla Walla. Uh huh. And that's when I decided I liked the EMS better than firefighting. Mm -hmm. And um, so I came back here, tried to get a job, couldn't get hired until you're 21 sure. uh, because of insurance reasons. So I was working for my dad. I was running a backhoe and putting pipe in the uh -huh. ground. And and uh, when I turned 21, I quit and got a got jo a job at Buck Ambulance and uh -huh. worked on a wheelchair car, driving you, one of those little vans around, taking people in wheelchairs did you, all over town. Did they still have... Remember Buck Ambulance? Did they still have the old uh, um, the old station wagon? We had that in in College Place, Washington. Yeah, I, I got to drive one of those up there. No um, knowledge. One of, of the what last, I think, one of the last Buck Ambulances ever committed to film was 
um, was it Drugstore Cowboy or one of those one of those Gus Van Zandt movies? Yeah, it was Drugstore Cowboy. Yeah. yeah, and they actually had the last. I think it was the last Buck Ambulance. Yeah. that was the old station wagon. Well, well the owner the owner had old it. Old guys. And, uh, Dennis, yeah, yeah. Dennis Marsh was, little, was the owner, and he that was young. they took it to parades and they yeah. did things like that. Yeah. The station that I worked out of uh, at Broadway and Gleason, Northwest Portland, was had been the Buck Ambulance station since the early 1900s. Uh-huh. So what's the difference between a Buck Ambulance and just, it was just some the, other ambulance? Was Buck was just the company. Oh, okay. And they got bought out by AMR. and Yeah, so, uh, just a company. Yeah, AMR is a publicly held company that controls the world now. Right. Um, but uh, that, was, that was really fun working down there because we ran 16 calls a shift in a 24-hour period, and I, and I worked 48-hour shifts. So basically did not sleep for 48 Ooh. hours. Mm-hmm. Um, loved it. I was 21 and That's just That's the bane of my existence. Really. Even at 21, not sleeping for yeah. 40? No, not my, huh. not my thing. Oh, well, then I went home and slept yeah. for 48 hours, and my then wife didn't appreciate that, and no. that's why we're no longer married. You were married no. when you were 21? Mm-hmm. Wow. How young were you when you got married? 20. Wow. I had been 20 for a week. Wow. Mm-hmm. That is young to be oh, married. Tell me. But I owned the world. Yeah. I was foreman of my dad's construction company. I drove a big four-wheel drive pickup. Nice. You know, I, I knew everything. Wow, that is, I'm just going to repeat that that is young. So you got out, so you young. named the Tualatin Valley Fire. Well, that, then I got hired by, by the fire department, and I right. did that for a while, and, and then they had the contest, okay. and then um, in, in 85, 86, I took a year off from work and went to school. Okay. Went to Michigan. My brother was at grad school, and I thought it'd be cool to be his roommate. Hello, and, Gary's brother. Um, yeah. And um, thought it'd be fun to be his roommate before okay. we both grew up and went separate ways. I came back, um, named the fire district, got hired at Life Flight, uh, and that was just the coolest job. Um, yeah. So it, how long it, did you do the Life Flight gig? Two years. Wow. Yeah. And, but see... Then, now they have full-time paramedics working there, but then we, we were the first group of 14. There was like 50 of so us. So you were the first in the... Yeah, there was like wow. 50 or 60 of us interviewed in the Portland metro area. That's like that's actually like living emergency in a way, because an emergency, I mean, we keep bringing this up, right? Because mm-hmm. we like to, cause right. we're because we're old Because Dr. Right. Noel is We obsessed. love talking about stuff like right, this, right? right. But I mean, emergency was essentially a, one of those great Jack Webb productions like mm-hmm. Adam 12 and everything. Mm-hmm. But it was a based on the true story of how right. they first set up the paramedic program in Los Angeles. Jim Page was the um, was the technical director for emergency. Right. And he went on to form a, a very successful company as an EMS consultant. Right. He has several magazines out there. He died a few years ago, but uh, neat man. I got to interview him on TV uh, when I was at the fire district. Um, I just, well, it, 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 you, you just, I just wanted to revere him. He's one of those grandfatherly kind of guys. So, so before all this happened in the '70s and into the '80s in every locale, I mean, firefighters didn't have really much medical training. No, they put out fires. That's right, and that was the whole thing. People and they were had dying, the, and they had they the resuscitator. Going, yeah, the resuscitator. And yeah. so the whole point was, you know, to 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 give people medical training right. to actually. But but know. Buck Ambulance was a pioneer in the U.S. Um, mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. EMS. And mm-hmm. uh, I got to work with some of the people who had been ambulance drivers back in the 60s, but knew more than I. Mother than, jugs and speed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so but, so what's, were the ambulance drivers paramedics as well? No. They were just drivers? Yeah. They, they, had like, they had like an advanced first aid course. It wasn't until about 72 or 73 that paramedics began to get trained. Wow. Yeah. And, that's uh, crazy. My friend that I had lunch with today, that's the fire marshal at Twalton Valley, he had he was one of the first paramedics in the in the state, which makes him one of the first paramedics in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, my long-term partner downtown Portland, he had the number three Wow. National Registry card. That was my he gosh. was the third certified paramedic in the country. And to learn from those guys and to work with them, I didn't realize the value at the time, but I look back on that and I just go, that was cool. Well, I mean, this is just like the groundbreaking yeah. history in yeah. this area. It, it was. And and these guys knew tricks and they they you know, they they taught me things yeah. that they don't teach you in paramedic school. And um, and so so because you just get bored way too quickly mm-hmm. you decided to take all this crap in the air yeah yeah well to be the first in the air they life flight had been around since 1978 it was the fourth program in the country uh-huh. to start up um wow and at their 10th anniversary the the national 
uh, air EMS organization, I don't remember what it's called, mm -hmm. said you'd need to have a, two crew members, two medical crew members on board for safety reasons and for a lot of reasons. So they reluctantly drug their feet and they said, oh, we'll get some of those crappy paramedics. Because these nurses, <laughs> these nurses are all four-year uh, four nursing degrees, uh, critical care nurses. They're mm -hmm. top, top of the line. Mm -hmm. And... You know, us paramedics, we're not, we don't have a professional degree. We have certificates. We're not licensed. We're only certified. Right. You know, blah, blah, blah. Well, it worked out really but well. But you're saving people's lives. Yeah. Every and day. and it, 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 they were reluctant to bring us on and they were, well, you know, we're in charge because we're the nurses and mm -hmm. you'll just do what we say. And, uh -huh. and, but we ended up being able to teach them some things and they taught us a lot of things. And, uh, I mean, the opportunity came, and I said, "I'm applying for that." Wow! And so, how many people are on a crew in a life flight? There's, so you got the pilot. You got the right? pilot, the flight nurse, and the paramedic. Okay, so it's three three person crew. Yeah. Wow! And you can transport two patients. Wow! Wow! Um, I didn't know that. I thought you could only take one. I don't know why I thought that. It it gets crowded with two. Yeah. And sometimes you have to leave some equipment on the scene, but uh, um, but it you know it 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 just after a while on the ground, you get tired of going to the same old skin knees and <laughs> chest pain and shortness of breath. Do you really get called for skin knees? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, Panicked yeah. parents? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I am and, not. And, a, I am not a. <clears throat> I'm not apparently a coddling mother. Well, then. it's that yeah. rich family that calls the life flight for the skin knee, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, well, the private citizen can't call life flight. It has to go through. Yeah. It yeah. has to go through an emergency agency and. And but the problem was you could only do that part time and you had to have a full time job. So um, really, yeah, because it so was they're part timers. Yeah, and so I'm full time Is that at the fire true department today. Do you know? No, they now have full time paramedics. Oh, thank God, that's yeah. a good idea. Because I looked in my laundry basket after doing this for a year and a half, and there was only underwear and uniforms. And I said, I got to get a life. Mm. Yeah, um, this this isn't working. And then I started dating one of the flight nurses, and so it hey hey hey, probably worked hey. better that I didn't work there. And All so, right. Much to the <clears throat> dismay of Dr. Normal, I'm going to ask a question now that's kind of going to diverge. Diverge from, from firefighters, paramedics, and emergency? It is. But you know what? In a way, it will still encompass it. You said something a little while ago, and you said something about on the 30-minute on the show as well. Um, and I can't remember how you phrased it, but basically, you, you've spoken a lot about people that you look up to mm -hmm. and people that are mentors to you. Mm -hmm. And I think... I'm wondering, as a woman, I kind of just, and I don't know if it's just me, uh -huh. and I don't have that many really close female friends. Actually, any close female friends I've had, I've made later in my life. We've been meaning to talk to you about that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, but is that a condition that's unique to men where they really have something that they aspire to? And they, I don't know that they form as much of a closeness as they admire someone. You know, it's a good question because I went through a um, uh, focused leaders program about five years ago, four years ago. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they asked us to write down are the men that we, that were mentors in our lives. Mm -hmm. And there was actually very few that I could actually put on my list that were more than just from a distance. Yeah. Like Jim Page, um, I mean, the closest I got to him was being able to interview him, and it went out Portland metro area on closed circuit TV, and um, and then I was at a conference in Long Beach, and he goes walking by, and I'm talking to some friends, and I go, Mr. Page, you know, and and he stops and he looks at me, and he goes, Gary, how are you? And he walks over, and I'm just wow. like, ah, you know, you and, 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 me. and yeah, and, and my friends are looking at me like, who, you know, how do you know him, you know, and all that. So it's kind of, you know, it was kind of fun to do that, but. I didn't actually get to mentor with him. I didn't actually like get to sit down and say, so tell me how to be a man. Mm -hmm. um, but reading his articles and reading his books and uh, seeing how he shaped the EMS community from really from a patriarchal standpoint, it was, it was really kind of cool to watch. Um, I worshiped the ground my dad walked on mm -hmm. and, um, it uh, it was really sad to learn that he had clay feet, and uh, mm. the first they say the best time, the best day, and the worst day of a of a boy's life is when he beats his father at a sport. Mm. And uh, I was playing racquetball with my dad, and I just crushed him. 
And so I switched to left-handed and I beat him just as badly. And it was horrible. Yeah. You know, it was very humiliating for all of us. And uh, I, I think there is a need, and, and this gets back to the daddy toot issues. I mm-hmm. think there is a need for men to have a role model mm-hmm. to look up to. Um, and I don't know if that has always been true or if it's just this whole women's movement feminist thing that's left us confused um, or what it is. But uh, I I still look for that. Mm-hmm. And and I don't find it. Yeah. It's not there. Um, there's, um, it just, you know, I... I keep hoping that Dr. Normal will, will turn into that man for me. And, <laughs> and uh, he He's says, a lot of man for a lot of people. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> he keeps Did I mention I played in a rock band? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Do you know uh, Pete Townsend? Did he mention that he wore like <clears throat> spandex that was ripped up and lip gloss and fluffy yeah. hair? Yeah, that was why while G was G, Walter. I call him G. <clears throat> He's G. While G was flying around saving people in a helicopter, I was wearing torn up spandex and well, I was getting a lot of play. You wore lip gloss though, right? Look at look at it this way. No, I just want you to answer the question. I want you to answer the question. Were you wearing lip gloss? No. Oh, thank God. Were you wearing? Were you wearing? I know John wore lip gloss. I can't remember. Were you wearing women's panties? It was the eighties, man. I I don't know what the heck it was. Did you look up to David Lee Roth? Yeah, we kind of did. Oh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um. But like I, I say, different I walks of life, and we're I know. getting play. So. I looked up to David Lee Roth. Live fast, die young, leave a good corpse. But he's still alive. I know he failed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Damn it, David Lee Roth. But the, the you lied to them. You lied to them. But see, I think this is just the interesting thing. You know, we can talk this out for mm-hmm. for hours and have seminars and beat drums. But right. at the end of the day, men are just finding a job to get the ladies. So, you know, if you're a paramedic and you're flying around in a helicopter and you're, you know, I, hitting on the, the women in the purple jumpsuits, or if you're, you, you know, I got, playing drums I, I, I got so loud tired. rock band. I got so you know. tired of that persona. Now I'm trying to figure out how you got me. Well, that was long ago that I did that, right? <laughs> was, I wouldn't, was there I wouldn't alcohol have, involved? I would not have slept with you if you were wearing spandex and fluffy yeah. hair. Oh, I'm sure at some point, yeah. Well, there I, was alcohol at some point. And cigarettes. I have smoked a lot when I met Dr. Used, Normal. Yeah, I used to be a smoker. Did you, did you let her smoke in your car? I wouldn't. I refused no, to. He no. said I could. Yeah. He no. said I could, but wow, I wouldn't. I really liked you. You really liked wow. me. Wow. Yeah, yeah, no. He he yeah. told me I could, and I refused to smoke in his car. Good for you. Nor in the house. Yeah. I didn't smoke in your house either, no. Yeah. I you smoked knew it outside. was a nasty habit, even though you were doing it. I, w- I hated that I smoked. Yeah. yeah. But I loved my cigarettes. Yeah. 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 I don't smoke anymore. Well, hey, speaking of drinks, it's drink time. We do this every week on our show. And Cami Chaos, what are you drinking? Piñosa. And G. Strange Love Water. Strange Love Water. Ask for it by name in your supermarket. The Portland Water Bureau, the cleanest water in the United States. Except that's filtered water from... Uh, yeah, that totally the... doesn't come from oh. the tap. It oh, comes from our don't water machine. Our pipes here. <laughs> don't, don't tell my dad that. Um, and uh, I'm just uh, drinking a little uh, simple kava yeah. tonight. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Keeping things I offered simple. you really nice teas, by the way. I know. Did you know I'm an alcoholic? Uh, yes, no? I did. No? I did. I didn't know if you knew that. We read your blog. Oh, yes, did we I, read did I, your blog. Oh, I wrote about that last night, didn't I? I think you said you something about it in the past you before, but then you also yeah. wrote about it last night, yeah. so it was reaffirmed. Yeah, yeah. So and how long have you, you been sober? Drink. About seven years, eight years. Seven years? Yeah. Life-changing event. It, it was... Or annoying habit that you it was wanted the, to get it rid of. It was the woman in the purple jumpsuit that uh, really? woke me up. Really? Not her, but sending her through treatment. Yeah. And and when I'm going to the, the family meetings, I realized I'm in the wrong meeting. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm doing as much cocaine and marijuana Ooh. and alcohol as she is. So, wow. It's good. No. It's good that you so realized it wasn't and just went and fixed it. the alcohol. It was the whole, yeah. whole nine yards. Yeah. The whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. Never did heroin. 
Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. I mean, no offense, but being saved by an EMS guy coming out of life flight who's a smack addict is probably not what you want to do. It's like, who brought Keith Richards to this party? Okay? You know, it's like... Did, did you know Keith Richards is only 21? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he's looking fine for yes. his age, Forever really. 21. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't think a lot of confidence there. No. I mean, did... did so I'm assuming the habit started during it, your time. It, it started um, after my divorce. Did it have okay. anything to do with the sleep issues? Yeah. Um, it, it was a whole self medication issues. Yeah. You know. Yeah. De- depression, suicidal thoughts. Oh, jeez. You know all that. So it's um, a, so. Ungoodness. Yeah. So it's kind of like that type A achieving, overachieving. Well, you know, type it's behavior. It's like a friend of mine just, said. He goes. I don't have a drinking problem. I have a serenity problem. Mm. Right. And when right. I lose my serenity, I try to solve it through alcohol. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, and when we did an intervention on him a couple of years ago and we took him into the ER, he had a blood alcohol of 4.5. Whoa. And he was walking. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Keith Richards? <laughs> <laughs> um, Keith Richards is permanently pickled. Actually, yeah. the, the one of the, I think one of the most interesting stories I've heard in the is uh, Buzz Aldrin, right? I mean, he he. Um, We're not going to say bad this, things about you know our well, he, astronaut people, are we? No, he, I mean he. No, I mean he he. Had, I think he wrote a book about this okay. and was very upfront about. I, I, I'm not aware of it. Well, I mean, he was essentially he was the second man on oh, the moon, right? Um, he has a PhD in. I think he knows who Buzz Aldrin uh, is. Physics or what? Well, some other people don't. You know, history yeah. isn't taught the, well in this, this country this anymore. This is for those born after 1970. Exactly. Yeah. If you look at the present me, election, excuse me, excuse me. I know who he is. Okay, honey, your hu- your 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 husband, your your, your, your father your, is a historian, so you actually true. have a sense of history. Yeah, that's true. My daddy. And you married a guy who likes history. My daddy too. does like the history. Yeah. We all yeah. like the history in yeah. the chaos family. Okay. Yeah. But um, that was all a hoax, in a way. So exactly, Capricorn yeah. one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, and Google is a mind, you know. Um, anyway, but um, you know, when he was done, I mean, he spent his whole life achieving, yeah, being the second man on the moon, right? Right. Although, so, so now what do you do? Now what do you do? And he's he's ending up. Uh, he ended up working. He worked on the early shuttle program in the seventies, right? Mm-hmm. Right mm-hmm. after he was done with the program, and uh, alcoholic and and all that. And I think years later, I I can't remember the outcome, but I mean mm-hmm. he's he's out there now and he's mm-hmm. very involved and kind of cleaned up his life. But it's like that you hit that pinnacle, right? And then hi, I walked on the moon. Now what? Right. You know what do I do now? That's um, so sad. I don't know. Work in a car lot i can't think cars. of anything mm-hmm. i can't I think of anything that would be so important to me that it would then end my life that i had like done it. walking on the moon no i don't think that walking on the moon would do that wouldn't it me. be like kind of a letdown no i well, like it, it, i like but, my but life see that might be a difference between men and women we define ourselves oh, by point. what we do mm-hmm. good point and women define themselves by who they are or their relationships i very much define myself by who i am not and, by what i've accomplished and and if you ask me what I'm feeling, I will tell you what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm. because I don't have a clue what I'm That's feeling. Funny. I never ask men how they're feeling. I it, almost it, always ask them what they're thinking. I a, wonder. A, a couple, you know, uh, 13 years ago, I left my fire district career and I went mm-hmm. back to school and and I cashed in my 401k and I was living off of that. And I was coming down the end of the $120,000 I'd been living off of for seven years. And I'm coming down to like my last $3,000. And I'm telling my mom, man, I got $3,000 left in the bank. And she goes, well, how, how does that make you feel? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just a fact. I was just sharing <laughs> facts with you. And um, it, it blew me away because then... Um, the woman I was dating at the time, I mentioned that how, and she goes, well, how do you feel about that? No clue. Yeah, no clue. Yeah. I don't cry. I, I cried when my dog, when we put my dog down. It's the first time. Jennifer, That'll do it. It's the first time Jennifer ever saw me cry. That'll do it. Sobbed my guts out. Yeah. She, she just kind of stood back and went, whoa. Yeah. He's not an arrogant jerk after all. Um, <laughs> Maybe I'll keep him. Just play uh-huh. one on TV. <laughs> so, um, wow. yeah, yeah. Um, I, I See, I had a little bit of that when I quit the fire district and I went back to school. I would imagine. I and mean, do you know how dehumanizing college registration process is? Yes. You, you, you understand that. Oh, yeah. And in so, general or as an older person? Always, yeah. I think. It's just, you know, and I'm standing in line. Especially the first time. Mm-hmm. 
oh, way back I, when, when, you, when you, it's you, like, if you don't give us your social security number, Reagan won't let you go to college. Right. Because you have to register for the draft. Right. What? It, it just, the, the whole thing. Remember, hey, rock band guy. I rock know. Band guy. <laughs> <laughs> I went from. Fuck you, Reagan. <laughs> I, I went from the EMS operations you, chief in, in Twalton Valley. Pissed. State awards. Blah, 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 blah. I go down. And I'm a number, and I'm standing in line. I, I, in my you went mind, from yeah. being someone very, very important. Yeah. And, and and in my mind, I'm like to being a cog. Do you know who I am? Yeah. You know, I wanted to go put on my full dress uniform I'm and Gary come back. Fucking Walter, right. damn it! But um, yo, it's G so in that, the house. So I had a little bit of a relapse with drugs and alcohol during that time. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, I. I, I crave the Portland microbrew, and so I, I. But you can't just buy one bottle when yeah. you're when you're outside of Oregon, and so you have to buy the whole six pack. Yeah. And so I'm just gonna have one bottle tonight, just a little taste of some Woodmere, and. <sighs> wow. A couple hours yeah. later, the whole six pack is gone. I think that, I think that's interesting, though. The whole, I mean, it's a good point. You know, when you get into these situations, these, I guess, social situations where it's like, you know, you have a. I mean, you build up this uh, image of yourself as mm-hmm. a person, mm-hmm. and um, it can be an inflated image or it can be a balanced image. But I mean, there's a, there's some ego involved. Oh yeah. If there's not ego involved, you're actually in trouble. Right. Right. Um, I agree. Um, but hopefully, you're trying to balance it. I love it. my ego. And um, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, and then you get in these situations, and you're thinking, I, you know, I like I I take great pride to just sit back. And let it all happen, mm-hmm. and then just go. I wonder if I say something, and then people will know that I like got this whole thing down or not. Or maybe I'll just walk away, you know, in in silent. Better victory. to be caught a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly. yeah. yeah, but no, but I mean, it's like you can just uh, walk away in silent victory and let the. Uh, let you know. I think that's why I like those movies. You know, like the Clint Eastwood movies, and and just. Yeah, he's just cool and calm, and he knows that. Yeah, he can, yeah, he, he can. It's a Clint Eastwood thing. That's he, right. He can. He can kill anybody exactly. in the room with his bare hands. But he's so, not gonna. So he doesn't have to say anything. Exactly. He can just glare at you. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and you're like, wonder what that guy's thinking. Yeah. What did he have for lunch? Right. <laughs> <laughs> bam, bam. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, that's I, a guy I, thing, right? It totally. Yeah, that's a. Mm-hmm, that's totally. a guy thing. Yeah. Is it? Is it a guy thing? Well, I don't know. Hmm. I'm the wrong girl to ask. There are times that I just sit there and glare at somebody, knowing that if I really wanted to, well, you're cami freaking I could chaos. damage them, but I don't have to damage them no. because I'm nicer and calmer than that. Right. If everyone, anyone knew that you are cami freaking chaos. Well, this is how much of a jerk I turned into in the '80s, strutting around, Mister. I got it all together. To the point where I walk into a room and somebody gets up and gives me their chair. Wow. And I'm just like, ha. And now I, I look back on that and, and I'm like, how childish is that? How absolutely immature child, to think that that makes me important. You know what? It's one thing to have your Are own sense you of ego. Or? It's yeah. another thing okay. entirely to have other people feed that ego for you. Right. And that can be a, a just as heady as any drug. Really? Well, why I hung out with these other guys. We went skiing like 40 times a year. We all worked the same shift. They worked for Portland Fire. I worked for Twalton Valley. And... And we just kind of walked around like, what was that movie, uh, The Magnificent Seven or something? But there's only four of us. And, uh, you know, four big guys walking into a bar, people just don't even think about messing with you. Yeah. So we pretty much just did whatever we wanted to. And yeah. we made, made fools. Of, we were like a bunch of frat boys, but we were yeah, 25, yeah. and uh, which really doesn't seem like that big a distance now. But, mm. um, you know, my what one of my officers told me is that if you want to get ahead in the fire service you got to become the perfect jerk really yeah and so that was our goal and we came pretty close wow <laughs> did a good job yeah well not and then like the corporate world yeah yeah <laughs> but at about 28 years old i realized i don't like this person yeah becoming. yeah and um it does seem like if you're moving up in the world, and I, I'm not joking. I right. mean, whether it's firefighter or the corporate world or yep. whatever, it's like, yeah, the more of a jerk you are, the better off you're going to be. Or the yeah, more of a situation. bitch you are. Yeah. 
and yeah, and uh, I don't like that. Well, and then and then this relationship fell apart. Um, the, the purple jumpsuit woman and goodbye, and, purple jumpsuit woman. And, and, and this is how ugly it got. I was hiding my handgun every day when I went to work. Okay. In case she that fa- is not good. In case she had found it. <laughs> And might oh, yeah, use yeah. it on me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And even yeah. even three mo- for three months after she moved out, I was still looking over. See, my when shoulder. I was in that situation, luckily I had no handguns I, around. I, I but just, I would have done the same thing had I had a. It, it, it was just a. To- Did she have a purple jumpsuit? Oh. No, but I had drumsticks. <laughs> <laughs> if you had will, been a vampire, you would have been a lot. I of trouble. will play paradiddles on your head. <laughs> so I just realized I, I'm an idiot. Yeah, I have no clue how to. You you put a beautiful woman in front of me, and I make poor choices, and yeah. and that's not a good way to live. Poor life. choices, Gary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're right. making some poor choices. That's right. That's right. So here's what <laughs> I did. You just valid. did Sarah, ba- Sarah Palin. <laughs> that was not Gee, a good. Sarah Palin. Do you have tattooed lip liner? <laughs> Does she have tattooed lip liner? According to uh, according to who did I meet today? Christine Kistner. Mm. Wow. Justin's, new, Justin's wife. new wife. Yeah, that's what she tattooed lip liner. Yeah, I'm not a big Poor fan choices. of the permanent uh, makeup. I mean, I love the tattoos. Mm-hmm. The permanent makeup freaks me out. I have a friend who has. We tattooed say drill baby, items. drill baby, drill baby. Yeah, I think my hairdresser has a like tattooed. Uh, she's very light eyebrow. She's mm-hmm. got tattooed eyebrows, yeah. and they look beautiful on right. her. They, great job, but yeah, the whole tattoo on face freak out the cami. So. Really. So back to like now. So anyway, no, we were, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. What's going on now? You got a family. Yeah, Life is it's a good. beautiful family. Oh, if I would have known, if I would have known that having a wife and kids was this much fun, I might have made some better choices when I was younger. But it sucks too. <laughs> no, no, it is the coolest thing I've ever done. But it sucks too. Yeah, yeah. I've got like three inch heels I throw across the room at you, baby. <laughs> It is the coolest thing <laughs> I've ever experienced. I have, I'm absolutely jumping up and down crazy about my family. Um, I I called Jennifer today and I go, "Have I told you lately that I love Uh-oh. you?" Oh, oh, the chat room like, doesn't like it when we. <laughs> sing. Do do, 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 yeah, they, we'll, we'll they just everyone upset. will clear out. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> Phil Collins on. <laughs> I have a question for you guys. Oh. No, 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 no. no yes, not, yes, yes, yes. This yes. is not. I, no, thought, this I thought the show was supposed to be about us. <laughs> it's about us as he... Yeah, I'm just fodder yes. for you yeah, guys. Yeah, he mm-hmm. tries to answer questions about his yeah, life, yeah. which we makes about us, but the guests okay. do not ask okay. direct questions be, of the be host. Be quiet now, Dr. Strange Mama. love. He's going to ask a question. Is this a sexual reference or a reference to a 1960s movie? Oh, man. No. Good, very, very, That is an excellent question, good but question. my answer is no. I think it's the one question we have to answer. Yes, you point. do. You do. It's not a reference to Don't either. look over here, buddy. Because <laughs> if you think I got the answer. I don't I'm like, think our sex yeah. life is that strange. Our, maybe our whoa, sex whoa, life whoa. is strange well, in the way that it's Well, for some happy people, and for active. some people, strange love is gay love. Mm, no, that's, no. That's what some people... Oh, well, it's strange heterosexual activity, my friend. You know what? I think it was more a reference... <laughs> Again, rock band. And this is kind of a... This is a reference. Here's here's what it is. I am a relatively normal individual, I think. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of tattoos. He's a normal individual. I would love to have more tattoos than I have. I feel woefully under-tattooed. It's very sad. What does this have to do with... Well, I'm getting there. I'm explaining the the... Where strange love came from, and since uh-huh. you're not the one that came up with the name, you have no knowledge. Do we need music behind no, this or something? No, I don't need knowledge. <laughs> I don't need. I need knowledge. I don't need music. So, and and Doctor Normal over here looks very normal. Mm-hmm. He looks like your average person. Mm-hmm. He is a freak, <laughs> and I I say that lovingly, and I think he takes it as a compliment. He is an he's an odd individual. He's mm-hmm. a very odd. We mentioned person. that I'm an Eagle Scout. <clears throat> mm-hmm. He was mm-hmm. an Eagle Scout. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't let him wear the uniform. Yeah. Um, oh, hey, what an idea. Hmm. No. Let's think about it's that. It's not an idea. <clears throat> I, Let's go on a I, camp out, shall forget we? Forget I said anything. Oh, be clumped. <laughs> <laughs> and so people often, I, I get a lot of questions, and one of the most often asked questions I get was, does Dr. Noel have any tattoos? 
That's or a, that's a strange question. I get it a lot because I have tattoos. A lot of people would assume that he has tattoos or piercings or some sort of you, body modification. You'll be happy to know that my daughter has been drawing on her arm <laughs> since so sorry. meeting you. <laughs> you know what? I think Cami Chaos is ready for a vice presidential debate because she's totally dodged the question getting into a whole no, other no, no, subject. I'm, no, 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 I'm she, totally she, answering the question. I'm going is, there. She is. So really? what I'm saying is often people find our love, our marriage, our relationship strange but for completely different reasons. Oh, this is than, a pile of horse shit. No, it's not. <laughs> the, also, the way, I the, love the name Strange Love. I thought it was really cool. It, it's like, I'm posting this podcast. We need to call it something. What are we going to call it? Strange Love. Really? What's that? Oh, no. Just name it that. It's All right, cool. fine. I got to post this. Let's go. But no, but that's what I've come up with in my mind with what it what it is. Because we have Strange Love. So you made that up after the fact? I have, no I, so, I have no idea when I made it up. I have no idea when I made it up. Is it strange if everybody else has the same kind of relationship? I would like to think that other people have the same kind of relationship that Dr. Normal and I have. You know that, that phrase, I'm unique, just like everybody else? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would really like to think that other people have the same relationship, but from experience, from talking to some people, from people pouring their heart out to me on occasion... I don't think that everyone has the same kind of relationship that we have. I'll tell you what, though, about the strange love thing. Okay. And I was always like, I don't know, strange love? (laughs) What are we doing? I let my wife name the show. I mean, maybe strange love has no direction. We have, it's a podcast of no direction. But the great thing is we come up in Google searches when you type in strange love. So if you're looking for Dr. Strange Love or a Depeche Mode song, sometimes you'll hit our podcast. So mm-hmm. it's not too bad. Actually, cool. Cami was on to something there. Brilliant. With Genius the marketing. Go- you know, Google SEO kind mm-hmm. of uh, search engine optimization That's kind right. of stuff. That's brilliant. Right. Yeah, like a being a poet and I didn't know, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm brilliant <laughs> with the... <laughs> Only a not. Shizzle in the manizzle, <laughs> baby. Chihuahua in the house. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, don't let me talk anymore. Well, you know, with with your blog or with my blog or with anybody's blog, and and I've learned a lot from from uh, Mr. Tarosi about uh, you know connecting and and uh, as I watch other people and you try and get that link love from different people mm-hmm. and oh my and, gosh, yes, and link and, and at some point. I'm like, I don't care. You know, it, 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 I pr- used it, to really care. I used yeah. to really, really care. And now I don't. I, I know. It, at first, I, I like. But we, I just Strange like, Love Live still oh, appreciates. It'd, it'd, it'd be sorry, nice Strange if, Love Live cares. Can it'd be nice if one dog. or two people would read this. But now I'm I'm averaging like, it, it's not huge. It's like 70 people per post or mm-hmm. something. And, and and that feels good, you know. And, and it's like, okay. You start out. You start out with a blog or a podcast or something. You mm-hmm. think. Yeah, maybe, you know, three or four or five people are going to check this out. My maybe mom, like it. you know. And, and then you do something and you hit a big spike. Yeah. Does your mom read? And the yes. bitch, My mom's been dead for three oh, years. I'm so oh, good. hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and don't say, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Wow, on that it's note. A, it's a generic, you know, it's okay, a clear speech. I'm sorry, I ask see. your dead mom reads <laughs> your blog. <laughs> So Gary, how's your mom doing <laughs> these days? Not a nice thing. <laughs> oh me, Lord! Yeah. Hey, Fortun- you know what? Fortunately, um, yeah, I was, at, at Beer and Blog tonight, I was talking to somebody about our moms and cutting the apron strings, and it took me twenty years and I moved to California. So mm. Yeah, yeah. Steel apron strings, and well, mom, um, I like my apron strings. Not yeah. that you listen to my show. Daughters are weird that way. Um, well, yeah. there's the whole saying when you're when you're. The whole marriage thing. Yeah. When your children get married, when your daughter gets married, you gain a son. When your right. son gets married, you lose a son. Right. Something right. like that. Right. Yeah. Right. My, so, my mom was trying to change that. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah. Well. So. What? What else? Any any cutting edge questions you have for us? Like this? <laughs> that was actually a very good question. I have Wait. I have been holding on to that question for a month. You are the, I, a good I, the man. Question. I actually I've been doing research on how I came to love the bomb and all that kind of stuff. There and you go. I saw that movie when I was about six or seven from the back of my dad's sixty three Ford Galaxy. Wow. Mm-hmm. At the, the drive in at the eighty second eighty second drive in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to live over there. Well, not right there because D- that would didn't that used to be right where the East Gate is? Now? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, is- no. 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 It was what? closer to Clackamas Prom- Promenade. Okay. That, cl- kind of where Clackamas Town Center. Is that oh, the yeah. one that was still here when I? Because when I moved to Portland, I saw there, risky business there. When, when I moved I to Portland, there was still a drive-in. 
on on Holgate. Yeah. Uh, no, on Foster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Foster. That's still and there, I went right? there. No. I used to go to the Franz Bakery so. outlet store. Mm-hmm. I'd park up there and pick it up on my radio and watch it for free. Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Sneaky, sneaky. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We had something, I can't help but think that before the show, when we weren't allowed to talk to each other, we had something interesting that we were discussing. Really? Maybe we but need to save it for next time. We discussed it. And you think? Did we? No, no. Yeah, yeah, we discussed it to, before the show and got in trouble for it. Yeah. Well, yeah. by special request, I'm bringing this up for oh, yeah. the G. A very, uh, you're a very big Dire Straits fan, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Well, this is the Pavlov's Cats version of a Dire Straits tune. Pavlov's Cats, that's funny. Well, that was the band. Yeah. That right. was the last band that I was in. I was like, I haven't heard that tune, Pavlov's Cats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been great having you here. It's been fun. We've had so much to talk about, and yeah. we have so much more to talk about. Yeah, it's been fun. You guys, next time. You guys, running out of time. You guys are just the coolest. Thank you. Know, you. To, so much. to be doing this and... To be connecting the community and to be talking to people. It's and, a lot of fun. And opening the dialogue. I can tell. You know, I can tell that you have fun. And Thank you. It's just it's just really cool. I We don't know what the hell I, we're I, doing, but... <laughs> hey, but we like doing it. Hey, that is the point of being authentic, right? <laughs> it's just putting it out there as is. Yeah. Thank as you very is. much. Yeah. But I, I, I think I, this is just really cool. And I, I, I admire you guys for putting this together and... Um, it's just fun. Thank you very much. Yay. Yeah. Thank and you. thanks for coming yeah. on the show. My pleasure. My Thank pleasure. you so much, Gary. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, Gary. Good night.